time now for a look at some of the day's business news. And for that, I'm joined by France 24's Cole Stangler. And Cole, you're starting with a look at a high stakes union election at an Amazon warehouse in Alabama. The vote count there has finally gotten underway but it's not looking good for the union. Yeah, that, that's right, Thomas. About half the ballots have been counted so far in the no's, leading the yeses by a more than two to one margin there. If employees were to vote yes for the union, it would make them the first such group of Amazon workers in the United States. That could eventually pave the way for contract negotiations, marking a sea change in labor relations at the tech giant. Amazon has heavily opposed the campaign, while many supporters hope it could revive organized labor in the U.S. Kamal Nedelec has the latest. Though votes are still being counted, Amazon has taken the lead. In a poll that could see its warehouse employees unionize for the first time in the U.S., workers in Bessemer have complained of tough working conditions, while Amazon says it pays $15 U.S. dollars an hour and offers health benefits. The retail, wholesale and department store union has already signaled it's ready to contest the results. Our system's broken. Amazon took full advantage of that and will be calling on the Labour boards to hold Amazon accountable for its illegal and egregious behaviour during the campaign. The union accuses Amazon of putting undue pressure on employees to vote no. That included mandatory anti-union seminars at work and text messages. RWDSU also alleges that the company pressured the US Postal Service to set up a ballot box on site. The union sees that as a way to influence the election. The firm says it was just informing employees of the issues at stake and that it respected labour law. This is only the second time that Amazon has faced a union challenge from workers in the US, despite employing almost a million people in the country alone. And the RWDSU says that whatever the outcome, this is a watershed moment in labour relations in America, which comes amid falling at national union membership. Well, staying with the business news, the U.S. has put a group of Chinese tech firms and labs on a government blacklist. Yeah, it's the latest time the Biden administration looks set to continue that tough-handed approach that we saw under Donald Trump. Commerce Department adding seven supercomputer research labs and manufacturers to its so-called entity list. It means American companies will be barred from selling technology to those firms without special approval. The U.S. says that's because they work to strengthen China's military and weapon systems, a long-standing allegation made about Chinese firms. Beijing has yet to comment, though, on the latest moves. Well, meanwhile, Cole, the IMF and the World Bank are wrapping up their annual spring meetings. Yeah, they're slated to last until Sunday, covering some of the most pressing, pressing issues facing the global economy. On Thursday, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell weighed into a growing issue of concern in some circles. That's the risk of inflation. While he acknowledged prices could see a temporary increase, he said a more sustained period of inflation appears unlikely. Now we have a, a situation where the economy is reopening. There's a, there'll be a surge in demand, perhaps. There will be bottlenecks, perhaps. But it seems unlikely that that will change the underlying inflation psychology that has taken deep roots over the course of many, many years. So what, that's what we think. We think that, that there will be upward pressure on prices, which may be passed along to consumers in the form of price increases. We think that that effect will be temporary. Let's take a look now at how markets are faring to close out the week. European shares all hanging around the flat line at the open, as you can see there. The FTSE and the DAX, both in more solidly negative territory. The CAC here in Paris with some very slight gains. Not a great day on the major Asian indexes. Losses almost across the board, as you can see there, including in Shanghai, in Seoul, and in Hong Kong. That's despite a very successful IPO for fintech firm Linklogis. Its shares were up more than 8% on the Hang Seng. And finally, a new report sheds light on Bitcoin's carbon footprint. According to a peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature Communications, mining of the cryptocurrency in China will set back that country's climate objectives. The authors say the country's Bitcoin energy consumption by 2024 will surpass the total energy use of Italy or Saudi Arabia. China is home to around three quarters of the world's Bitcoin mining, largely due to cheap electricity rates. Though it should be said, Thomas, there is growing awareness of the issue. Just last month, the region of Inner Mongolia set a plan to shut down cryptocurrency mining there uh, to help cut down on energy use. Okay, Cole Stangler with the latest business news. Thank you very much.